so today in this video we will discuss about the allosteric regulation of enzyme activity the regulation of enzyme activity um, is done via several way such as covalent modification but we are going to focus mainly on the non covalent modification which is the allosteric regulation of enzyme activity so in this video if you look at this structure of enzyme this is an structure of enzyme and everyone knows that enzyme contains a substrate binding site and in this site only the substrate binds and will and the enzyme will convert the substrate into product but in case of metabolic pathway there are certain enzymes that are present and such enzymes tends to contain more than one site and these sites are the allosteric site such enzymes also regulate the rate of reaction of metabolic pathway and this enzymes this regulatory enzymes they either gets activated or they either get inhibited that via the presence of activator or inhibitor that will bind to this allosteric site okay so this site when it binds um, an inhibitor in that case this enzyme gets inactivated and we, it will no longer bind the substrate but when this allosteric site binds any activator in that case the conformational change in, in, in enzyme will occur in such a way that it will bind its substrate and more product formation will be favored so such type of enzymes are mainly present in a metabolic pathway so if you look at this pathway of glycolysis where glucose gets converted into pyruvate you can see that both the activation of allosteric enzyme as well as the inhibition of allosteric enzyme take place so if you can see here that glucose gets converted into glucose 6 phosphate okay so when the concentration of glucose 6 phosphate is increasing a lot okay when the accumulation of this glucose 6 phosphate are getting more and more when they are getting more accumulated in that case what happens is that this glucose 6 phosphate it will go and bind to the allosteric site of hexokinase so what will happen in turn when it binds to the allosteric site of hexokinase in that case hexokinase will be inhibited okay and when this hexokinase will be inhibited glucose will no longer be converted into glucose 6 phosphate so you can see one more thing here that glucose 6 phosphate being the product of this reaction it is inhibiting the enzyme so such type of reaction where product is inhibiting enzyme this is known as product inhibition or feedback inhibition okay in this case what is happening the reaction is not allowing the hexokinase enzyme to proceed forward to proceed towards the direction of glucose 6 phosphate so feedback inhibition is taking place the product itself is inhibiting the enzyme okay now when this glucose 6 phosphate now let's come to another example of fit forward okay fit forward reaction in that case what you will see that glucose 6 phosphate gets converted into fructose 6 phosphate and this fructose 6 phosphate gets converted into fructose 2,6 bisphosphate so only when there is high concentration of fructose 6 phosphate then only fructose 2,6 bisphosphate will form via PFK2 okay so in many entrance exam they ask about the role of PFK2 in glycolysis so when this phospho fructokinase 2 converts this fructose 6 phosphate to fructose 2 6 bisphosphate then this fructose 2 6 phosphate is an allosteric activator of pfk1 okay so this pfk1 gets activated allosteric allosterically via fructose 2 6 bisphosphate and once this fructose 2 6 phosphate bind to the allosteric site of pfk1 then only this fructose 1 6 this phosphate is formed so this is how fructose 2,6 bis phosphate regulates pfk1 this is also an example of allosteric regulation so at one case what we have seen the product is inhibiting and 
in another case we are seeing that pro product is accelerating the formation of this fructose one species phosphate so this is first feed forward and this is feedback inhibition which you can see here in both the cases okay so this is how the allosteric regulation take place in a cell so if you look at the structure of enzyme you see that this is the active site and this is the allosteric site so when an inhibitor binds to this allosteric site in that case binding of inhibitor induces a conformational change in enzyme you can see that the structure of this and structure of this site is completely different the active site in this case is more wider while in this case it is a bit narrow okay so as a result of which substrate won't be able to bind because the orientation the configuration as well as the space that was needed for the substrate to bind here is not available so in that case what will happen no reaction will take place no product will form and the inhibitor has inhibited the reaction and when you look at this allosteric activation in in the and in this case of allosteric activator you can see here that when this allosteric activator binds to this allosteric site in that case again a conformational change in enzyme take place which will involve the change in the shape of substrate binding set site that will allow the binding of the substrate and as a result of which you can see that this substrate can bind it so this is how the allosteric regulation take place uh, so we will discuss about the cooperation the sigmoidal curve in the next few video of this allosteric regulation series okay so thank you for watching my video